black hair has actually defined black womanhood in a lot of ways across this experiment called the United States. It was a weekend like none other for our very own Demetria Obalor. A Facebook post ignited a serious conversation worldwide. The controversy is coming from people who aren't too happy with the way that I look on television saying, oh, her body is too big for that dress or she's too curvy or her hair is unprofessional. It's crazy. We don't like it. So I really want organizations to understand that natural hair is much larger than you may think and that there are unintended consequences and or landmines that you could be stepping on when you try to develop policies that prevent or constrain how people wear their hair. Seven-year-old Lamaya Kamen showed us last week how she was playing with her hair when her first grade teacher at Congress Elementary cut one of the braids with his scissors. She told me to stop playing with it. And they cut it off and sent me back to my desk. The state of Texas sent me a letter saying, we heard that you're braiding and you can't braid. I look around and there's seven cops standing in the shop ready to cart me off like a common criminal. And this is why I'm natural. I was wondering, can I touch yours? My hair. Yeah. Can I touch my hair? Yeah. Why? It just, it looks so interesting. I always ask and have white people, can I touch it? It's so pretty. Black women did not used to be the standard of beauty. So we had to wrestle a lot. We had to fight our way up to say what we have is beautiful. Hair used to reflect consciousness. And so anybody with an afro, you indeed felt that they were conscious. I've never met any man who's ever been like, I hate your hair. I love a woman with natural hair, <laughs> first and foremost. I'll, I'll prefer it. Perms are gonna end up in the Black Art Museum, as my friend said. Like, nobody's doing perms anymore. I think most people are trying to be natural, even if they're gonna have straight hair.